So of course I want to start by saying thank you everyone for joining. My name is Cody Armstrong and today of course we're talking about organizing your unshaped data. Now as I always say with these webinars we really encourage you to ask any questions that you'd like. There's a questions dialogue in your GoToWebinar control panel. Feel free to ask any question and I'll do my best to stop and address the questions from time to time as we're going through this webinar. Now this is going to be a short webinar. Uh, I really wanted to focus not so much on the CAD aspects of Onshape, but really how to manage all of the data that you're creating in Onshape and how you can create folders and labels and help yourself organize all this Onshape data. Now, again, feel free to ask any questions. It's going to be a short webinar, um, and I want to jump right into things. So let's get started. Now, a brief agenda. Of course, I want to introduce you to labels and tab folders. I think that's the big thing that I want to show today, how to use labels, how to use tab folders, and how they can help you organize your Onshape data, but also discuss common folder structures. And I think this is something that carries over for a lot of users. If you have you know, a CAD application that you've been using, uh, another professional CAD application you've been using that uses files, oftentimes you'll have some kind of a folder structure that you want to create um, to manage and, and store all those files. And I, I want to point that out because it's very similar in Onshape. We can store tabs within a document using that same kind of folder structure that you may be used to. So I want to take a moment to discuss some of the common folder structures. Again, it's, it's very relative to you know, each person's preferences, but there are some things that um, are very similar, very common amongst engineers. Um, also, I want to discuss, of course, how to recreate these. How would I go about recreating that folder structure I like in Onshape? And I want to walk you through how to create folders, subfolders, how to put parts into them, and kind of uh, pare down your, your documents. Give me just a moment here. I get just a couple comments saying the volume's a little low. Give me a moment. I'm turning it up. Hopefully that's a bit better. Okay, so um, let's jump into it. Now, before I get into any topic, topics of the day, I always like to mention a few or get a, a, a quick poll uh, of the audience and how um, you're using Onshape. So one of the questions... Uh, that I have, testing, testing, turning up the audio one more time. Okay, so one of the questions that I have for the audience is, bear with me for just a second, if you're using Onshape today, is your interest in Onshape for professional use? Are you using it um, for you know, hobbyists? Are you using it to create 3D printed projects? Are you using it um, as a tool to replace SolidWorks? You know, how are you using Onshape today? Is it for professional use or are you using it for hobbies and things? And I'll give you just a moment to fill that out and we'll close it and we'll move on. Okay, so let's move on. So, the results. It looks like about 72% of you are attending Onshape as interested in professional use. Um, about 28% are using it for hobbies, and that's great. So I think a lot of what we're going to talk about here today really ties into that professional application. I think you know a lot of professional CAD users today are familiar with the concept of storing all their files in these folders, and everyone kind of has their own folder structure for how they want this stuff stored. And that's a big part of what we're going to talk about here today. So let's dig in. Now, um, the first thing that I want to mention is how do you organize your files today? And I think this is a big one. It's, it's completely relative to the person. I mean, everyone has their own preferences for how they choose to store their files. Uh, but if you've come from a traditional CAD system, sometimes, you know, you have these kind of hierarchies that you like to follow. And, and you know, I've even seen companies where they have a, a practice where the folder structure must be this, you know, in these steps. And I've kind of laid out a generic one here, and I admit that, that many, uh, there are many different variations of it, but a lot of them are very similar in the sense that, you know, you have this top level folder, um, you know, oftentimes just CAD or CAD data or something to that effect. And then within that folder, you'll have subfolders subfolders for different projects and then within the subfolders for different projects you'll have subfolders for different pieces of the projects mechanical electrical miscellaneous hardware 
drawings, all kinds of examples of things you might create subfolders for just to organize the data within that project. So the big thing again I want to mention is this is totally relative. Everyone here is going to have their own preference on how they choose to store their data. But the neat thing is you, you have flexibility to do this kind of thing in Onshape as well inside of your document. Now, there are a few things I want to mention about this structure. If you use something similar to this, um, the CAD folder is just simply your Onshape account. You log into Onshape and all your projects are there. So think of the CAD folder, if you're using this kind of hierarchy, as a way of storing you know, all your projects. And in Onshape, we just simply log in and each document is a project. So then we get into the projects. And of course, project one, project two, project three. And, and as you go through renaming your documents and giving them appropriate names, you realize that the, the document is that project level container, project level folder. So within each project, within each document, you're going to need subfolders and maybe even subfolders within the subfolders. It could be you know, an infinite level of subfolders depending on how much control you'd like. So again, this depends on the user, the preferences that they have. But the neat thing is you can recreate this structure using Onshape. And as I mentioned before, think of CAD, that top level folder, as just your Onshape account. You log in and all your projects are there. Then you get into the documents. Each document is project. So project one, project two, project three are just documents in Onshape. Within each document, within each project, we have subfolders depending on how you like to organize your data. And I give you an example of mechanical, electrical, miscellaneous, but just realize totally up to you how you choose to do that. So how do we do this in Onshape? And the simple answer is tab folders. Uh, we have a new functionality. It's not I shouldn't say it's brand new, it's, it's been out a few months now. Um, but we have tab folders and it, it essentially allows you to take any tab and put it into a folder or a combination of tabs and put them into a folder. And the beauty of that is of course, if you have hundreds of parts, dozens of sub-assemblies, dozens of drawings, imported files, all these things, you'll know having a lot of tabs at the bottom of the interface is a headache. Especially when you're trying to scroll through them or get to one that's all the way to the right or left and you're on the other end, it's difficult to get to that and, and find it. The idea behind this is when you have lots and lots of tabs, it makes sense to store them inside of a tab folder. Now, tab folders, can you can create subfolders within them. And as I mentioned before, this will allow you to kind of recreate that familiar structure that you may be used to from a traditional file-based system. So you can create subfolders. You can place any tab into a folder. So it, it could be parts, assemblies, drawings. It could be imported stuff, maybe imported files that you've brought in. Um, it could be anything that you'd like. And, and so you, know, you can place any tab in any folder that you'd like, even creating subfolders. Now, there's a few ways to handle this. And um, you know, of course, you could just click the plus icon, create a folder, and I'm going to show you that in just a second. But I think the big thing I want to stress, and I think this is important for those users out there with a lot of tabs, use the tab manager. And I'm going to show you this in just a second, but the tab manager makes a huge difference when you're talking about organizing lots of tabs. You don't want to left click or drag individual tabs from the bottom of the interface if you have a lot of them. You know, if I have maybe just a couple, that's fine. But if I'm trying to move, you know, uh, 50 parts into a folder, I don't want to do it one at a time. And that's when we get into the tab manager. Tab manager allows me to control select, shift select, a whole bunch of things at once, and then drag them into a folder. So that's the big thing I want to say. And that probably one of the biggest takeaways, I think, for this webinar is please use the tab manager if you find yourself doing this a lot. If you just have a lot of tabs, the tab manager can make a huge difference. So if you're not using it already, please do. All right, so as I mentioned, this is going to be a short webinar. Um, let's jump right into it. Now, the first thing I want to stress is, again, you know, this is totally relative. I'm going to create kind of a generic example for you, but realize that you can create any structure that you want and you can name it anything that you want. Now, as I mentioned before, you know, you have all your tabs across the interface and I have this automatic punching machine. And if I scroll across the tabs, you can see there's a few dozen, maybe even close to 100 different tabs in this document. And scrolling back and forth across all these tabs at the bottom is not the most practical way of finding what I'm looking for. So the idea behind creating folders, of course, just to organize it so that I can go into my parts folder and find all my parts, or I can go into my drawings folder and find all my drawings without having to scroll or left click or do any of those types of things. Now, first step, how do we create a folder? There's actually two ways. 
you can create one from the plus icon in the bottom left corner, just like creating a new part or drawing or an assembly. If you click plus, you'll see the option to create a folder. So I can click, uh, let's click create a folder. It will add a new folder tab here and I can give it, let's give it the name parts. Okay. So now I've created a new folder called parts. Now all I need to do is drag a tab or tabs into that folder. So you can see as I drag this tab over the folder, it collects inside of it. Now that tab is inside of the parts folder. Um, now keep in mind, if I left click that folder, all the other tabs disappear. So once you go into a folder, you don't see all the other tabs in the document. You only see what is in that folder. So a commonly asked question, how do I get back? to all the tabs, you'll see a little home button here, all tabs. So if you click that, that will take you back to all the tabs and not looking at a specific folder. So just a tip, when you left click a folder, it will show you only what's in that folder until you click home to go back. Now a few things that commonly get asked, how would I delete a folder? How do I go about doing that? If you right click, you'll see an unpack option. Unpack will remove the part from the folder and remove the folder. So essentially bringing it back to where it was just a moment ago. Now, as you can see, as we're going through this, you know, dragging one part at a time into my folder can be a tedious task. And, and of course, if I'm doing a lot of this, if I have, you know, hundreds of parts that I want to control, that's not going to be the way that I control it, right? Um, so what I'd recommend here is, again, using the tab manager. Now, if you're not familiar with it, um, the tab manager is on the bottom left corner. And a quick question that's come up, any way to pop out the tab manager? There isn't a way to disconnect it, so to speak, from the interface, but it is there until you shut it off. Um, so it, it doesn't collapse on its own. It stays up on this left side. You cannot move it, so to speak, but, but it does stay up on that left side. It doesn't close itself automatically. Um, okay, so... Tab Manager, again, bottom left corner, you click the toggle Tab Manager, and it launches it here on the left side. Now, the reason this is so important is when you start getting more and more documents, search, folders, shift select, control select, all those things become more and more important because you don't want to do things one at a time. Um, so a few key things I want to point out about it. First off, these are generic things about the tab manager, by the way, but you can toggle filters. So I can say, show me all the parts with this name, or I can show me all the assemblies or drawings with you know that in the, in the title. So you can search by part, assembly, drawing, imported geometry, even miscellaneous files that you import. Um, you can sort by name or by type, and it is a quick way of getting around within the interface within this tab manager, finding what you're looking for. But of course, I still have the problem of just having lots and lots of tabs. Right? So how do we organize all of this stuff? I have bolts, I have washers, I have all this stuff that I don't really need to have as a separate tab that I have to scroll through all the time. How do we organize this? I've already shown you how to create a parts folder. Right? You can create a folder with the plus icon. But a, a valuable tip that I can give you is you can shift select, control select from the tab manager. And so this is a much better way if I had to select a dozen parts, you know, say that I needed to go through and select all of these parts, I can shift select them or control select. If you're using a Mac, by the way, it's um, command, not control. But again, same idea. You know, I can shift select, control select a whole bunch of parts at once and then just right click them. So this is probably one of the biggest tips I can give you if you've already got this large assembly and you are you need to start cleaning it up, so to speak, shift select all the parts that you want to put into a single folder or control select and right click and you'll see the option for add selection to folder. So a few things I want to point out. Um, first off, you can create subfolders. So if I go into my parts, you can see here's the parts folder I created a second ago and here's the two part studios that I put inside of that parts folder. But now let's say, you know what, I have this parts folder, but inside of the parts folder, I want a separate folder called hardware. Uh, maybe I want to store all my nuts and bolts in a folder called hardware and then leave all the parts that I modeled in, a, in you know, the top level folder in, in parts. You can right click a folder and you'll see new folder. 
All right, so right click a folder, say new folder, and it will go through and add a new folder, and let's call this hardware. And so now I have this folder called hardware. Now it's easy for me to go in and find, okay, here's an M16 nut. I can drag and drop it right into that folder. Right? And I'm le literally left click drag the, the part from the tab I want into the tab I want to move it into. And now if I expand the hardware folder, you can see I have that M16 nut in that hardware folder. So again, key thing to keep in mind, this is the parts folder is my top level, so to speak, folder in this document. But within that parts folder, I have a separate folder called hardware where I cho may choose to store, you know, things like M14 nuts and bolts and, you know, stuff like that. So again, just one example of how to organize things, but I think this allows you to easily go through and build out, um, you know, a, a organized structure for managing these large, larger uh, sets of data. Right. And here's an example where maybe I shift select seven different assemblies at once and say, okay, let's add these to a new folder. Right. And you'll see, okay, there's my new folder. We'll call it assemblies. And if I want to, I can just start dragging and dropping things into it. So real quickly, I can say, well, I have my assemblies folder. I have my parts folder and I have my hardware folder within the parts folder. And I can start to structure this in a way that makes a lot more sense to me. And of course, the big thing here, what you'll want is you'll want to be able to collapse and expand and not necessarily look at all the tabs at once. All right. So let's do a little bit more dragging and dropping to kind of clean things up here. Okay. So I just dragged five more assemblies into that assemblies folder. And let's do a couple more part studios as well. And we'll drag these into the parts folder. So again, the idea is very similar to how you might move files around in, in Windows Explorer. One thing I always like to point out about this, though, is this does not break references. Uh, so if you're used to moving a part and all of a sudden you're simply breaking because it doesn't know where the part is, that won't happen in Onshape just because of the nature of Onshape. Our architecture is different. So don't worry about moving stuff around and having references broken. Uh, that that won't happen. So just keep in mind again. Now you'll see I've got a lot fewer tabs. Let's go down here. I've got a lot of Part Studios, so let's put them all in that Part Studio tab, uh, the Part Studio folder. Okay. Now, parts assemblies are very common examples of folders. Uh, drawings is another good example. So you know I have a few drawings in here. Let's shift select all three of them and say add selection to folder. And let's create a new folder called drawings. Okay. Now if I expand out, there's all the drawings for this document. Okay. So I think you can kind of get the idea. Now one question that's come up, is there a limit for folder levels? And I'm not aware of one. Uh, I haven't personally hit it, but I haven't created dozens of subfolders. Um, you might give it a shot, but I'm not aware of any limitations to the amount of subfolders. Is this part drag drop functionality restricted to parts in separate Part Studio tabs, or does Onshape have the intelligence to be able to separate parts out of multi-part Part Studios? No, and that's a good question. So the question is, you know, if I have, you know, one Part Studio with a dozen parts, is it smart enough to be able to, to intelligently put one in one folder and one in another? It's important to keep in mind these are tabs we're storing, and they're not parts in in the tab. So anything within a tab is going to be stored inside of that folder. That's a good question. Is it possible to create different views, assemblies with parts that are shaded or displayed in wireframe for a folder? Yes. Um, you could do that with, with branches very easily. Um, it doesn't, you wouldn't need to use folders to accomplish that. You can create a branch and accomplish that. Can we create a shared folder as opposed to a shared document? Or can we just share a folder? No. As of today, you can only share a document. So the document is the container for which you can share. You can't share pieces of it, and I can't um, share just one folder within a document. That is something that I say that I will say that we're that we're working on um, more granular, specific controls over permissions and share. Um, but as of today, no, no, it's it's specific to the document when you share. Is there any intention to add folders to the main document shader or shared label between users? This is another good question. We do have labels. I'm going to show you that in just a moment. But they're not folders in the typical sense. Um, it's more of a way of tagging a document with a specific um, you know, string of text that allows you to filter for it. 
as you mentioned, though, the problem with that is the label is not shared. It, it does not, no one else can see that. It, it had to be created specific to the user. That is another area that we're hoping to address very soon. Uh, so just keep in mind, you know, we're aware of it and, and hope to figure that out soon. If you do create a label, which I'm going to show you in a second, it does not apply when you share it. Do you plan to have folders for Part Studio features too? Um, this is another good question. Yes, you will have the ability to organize your feature list within a Part Studio. I assume that that's what you're asking, the ability to have folders within the, the feature list and organize your features with folders. And the answer is yes, that's definitely something that we're looking at. Best practice, when should you keep multiple parts in a single Part Studio? When should you separate parts into multiple Part Studios? This is another very good question. My answer to it is, if your parts are unique and interrelated, they're tied to each other in some capacity, it's best to have them in the, in the same part studio. If they're not related to other parts in any way, and um, it, it makes sense to keep them as a separate tab. So and I think you'll find scenarios where parts tie to each other and those relationships between parts are very important. And there'll be certain designs where it's not. You know, where it's, it's totally on its own and you need to match everything around it. So um, I would say if it's unique and it's interrelated, in other, in other words, parts that are interrelated with each other, it makes sense to put them all in one part studio. Otherwise, you can create separate part studios. Is it possible to have libraries like folders? I mean, at least bolts, nuts, and washers are useful to be stored as libraries. Yes, you can do that today. You can create a document called bolts, nuts, and washers and insert all the you know, every bolt that you use from that one project. And you can store folders in there as well. So yes, this would be using our linked documents capability. Now, if you're just looking for nuts, bolts, and washers, um, you, there's an app in the App Store where you can do a search from uh, Trace Parts or Cadenas and just import standard library hardware. So you don't necessarily have to build your own library of nuts and bolts. But if you choose to, you can, and then just link those nuts and bolts into any other project that you want. Is it possible to first create folders and then save a new part to a specific folder? You can create a folder first, but you will need to drag it into that folder once the part or assembly is created. In a nested folder, can you go up a level from the tab bar versus just home? You'll notice, let me select one of these tab folders here. So if you go in and select one of these tab folders, you can select a subfolder within it and not necessarily have to go all the way back home. Um, so if I select the parts folder here and expand it out, I can only see what's in that parts folder until I choose to expand out all the others as well. And the same thing goes by the way when you choose it from the bottom here. Okay, so if I go to choose a parts folder, I still need to organize a lot of these parts, but I'll have a subfolder that I can click on and not go back all the way to home. So you'll see, let me find a folder with more tabs in it here. Let's go to parts. So parts, I have longitudinal slide leg, so on. Um, the key thing to keep in mind is as you're going through this, um, you may have scenarios where, you know, I have a hardware folder within it. So now I'm in the parts hardware folder. If I want to go back to parts, I just left click parts. And that takes me back one folder, but not all the way back home. So yes, I, I think the short answer. Um, is there a point where too many tabs in a document causes performance issues? No. The tabs are not all automatically loaded uh, immediately. The, the performance um, hit that you might take is just upon loading them, and there's no real negative reason. Like I've heard the argument, should I create separate documents or a whole bunch of tabs in one document? And there really isn't a good performance benefit to either. So it's really more a matter of how you prefer to store your data. Can I make folders and tabs before starting the project? You can. You need to create a document first. So I, I think the short answer is going to be no. You need to create a document first, and then within that document, you create your folders. So think of, again, your document as the project. And you create that project folder, which is the document, and then you go into that project and create the subfolders for it. And you don't have to model parts. You can start with the folders. What a lot of users will do, especially if you have a company that has a practice where you know the folder structure has to be this, this, and this, you may have a CAD admin create the document and then create the subfolders and then share that with the necessary people. So it's you know more of an organizational thing, but it's entirely up to you. Can I switch a folder on and off, visible, not visible? No. 
You know, there's no way to shut off the visibility of them. You can collapse them so they're not seen, but there's no way to just say, don't show me any part folders, for example. So the big thing is, again, you know, I've created all these folders. Let's collapse a few of them here. And I'm starting to pare down this long list of tabs that I have to something that's much more manageable. So as I start to bring in all these different assemblies and these part studios into my document, you can see this list that I have initially of geometry that I'm working with is getting much more manageable. And now I can get in and figure out, okay, what it is, you know, what is it I'm looking for? Is it a part of an assembly or is it a drawing? Now, another common example I have is imported geometry. I think a lot of users like to be able to store the geometry they imported as a second or a separate uh, folder from any others. And so again, just another common example, I can control select or command select a whole bunch of imported geometry, for example. I think that's all of my imported parts here. Just right click them and say add selection to folder. Just like I did a moment ago with the assembly and let's say imported. And now I have all of my imported parts, these are step files, that were brought into this document in that imported folder. Okay, so again, just trying to pare down this list and make it more manageable. And as we start to drag and drop all these pieces, let's grab a few more assemblies here. You can see this list just keeps getting shorter and shorter. And again, you know, the, the, arc, the hierarchy that you choose is entirely up to you. Um, you know, that's something that's really um, a matter of preference for most users today. But it, it, the, you can follow that same hierarchy that you may be used to. So if you like to see the folders in, in Windows Explorer, for example, in a certain way, you can recreate that same folder structure here. So that is creating tab folders. And, and the big thing I want to stress, if you do a lot of this or if you find yourself with hundreds of tabs, use the tab manager. It can make all the difference in the world. You can shift select 100 parts at a time and put them into a folder so you're not tediously doing them one at a time. All right, so a few questions. Collapse all, expand all option in the tab manager might be useful. That's a good point, yeah. Um, there is not a collapse or expand all today. Definitely a good good one. Uh, if you haven't already, use the feedback tool and let us know uh, if that's a particularly important one. I think other users have requested it, but the neat thing about our feedback tool is if we do uh, add it and we prioritize based on the number of users we get feedback, you'll get an email saying this has been added. So if you have feedback like that, definitely use the feedback tool and let us know. It allows us to prioritize and organize so that when um, we do add it, you're notified. Question, when I import a DXF, there's one tab that just seems to have the file name. What's the point of this tab and can I delete it? The reason that tab is there is so that you can store it. You can store the DXF in the Onshape document. The reason that may be important is six months from now, you know, you, your hard drive crashes and you don't have that DXF anymore, you can download the DXF from that tab. So you can get the original file. Now the question, can you delete it? Yes. There's no, it doesn't link to it in any way. If you delete it, it's not going to disappear anywhere else it was inserted. The key thing, though, is you won't be able to download it at some point in the future. And the reason those tabs exist is just so you can download it or update it at some point in the future. What are those step files that don't seem to do anything? If I delete them, they don't seem to make any difference. That's a good question. If you import a step file, a DXF, a parasol, just like the question before, it leaves a tab for the imported file. And again, the reason is so that you can go back and delete or you can go back, I should say, and download those at any time. So if, you know, I brought in all these step files and then I realized six months from now, the step files, the hard drive they were sitting on crashed, I can just download them again from the Onshape document. Yes, you can delete them and no, it does not have an impact. So don't worry about deleting them. If you choose to, it's not going to hurt you. Question, I missed the beginning. Are those folders more for storing generic parts to be copied and used later as a specific instance in an assembly? It's entirely up to you. I'm uh, storing all of these generic parts in a parts folder because that's how I choose to organize it. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean that's the way you have to do it. Um, and yes, you could take these parts and drop them into other assemblies. Uh, that's entirely up to you. But if you think about the project level, Oftentimes, you'll want subfolders within it, and that's the idea behind these tab folders. 
question. Can you use filters to support fold, folder organization? Did you select all assemblies? Filter to support folder organization. You can you can use filters to filter by labels, but not it's not going to filter by folders specifically. I'm going to get into labels in just a second, so bear with me. But it's important to point out if I do a search on the documents page, I'm not searching within a folder inside of a document. Um, you can search the tabs, of course, right? So if I did a search tabs here, I can it will search within those folders, um, but not on the documents page. And that's where we get into labels, which I'm going to talk about in just a second here. So again, you know, I'm doing the same thing over and over. I don't want to bore everyone with the details, but just keep in mind, you know, it's a neat way to organize all your data and not have to manually scroll through a whole bunch of tabs, you know, one at a time. Okay. So let's drag these into the assemblies. We have Part Studios galore. Here we go. Okay, so now we've reached a point where everything is in a subfolder. So now when I go into this document, you'll see I don't have a hundred tabs across the bottom. I have four folders. And I can go into each folder just by left clicking it and seeing all the tabs within it, go back to the home tab, and I can see all top level folders. And as I mentioned before, you can go into subfolders. So I can go into parts and then into hardware and then even into another subfolder if I chose to. So just keep that in mind. Big tips, tab folders, and the tab manager on the left here are, are critical pieces to organizing all your data. Now, the last thing I want to mention here, bear with me for just a, oh, I see a few questions. Is there a method to trace parts of an assembly that have been moved to separate folders? In that case, you, you intended to inherit an assembly and need to quickly find the associated parts of the assembly. Is there a method to trace an assembly that parts of an assembly that have been moved to a separate folder? Um, you can. You can open the assembly, right-click a part, and say switch to this tab. That's probably one of the easiest ways of getting to a part from within assembly. Um, I, I believe that's what you're asking. Forgive me if it's not. Um, there's not a specific, like, there's not a specific, um, well, there is history. I should say there's history. So when you when you move a tab to another folder, you have a history. I can see move two tabs to position one, move two tabs and so on. So I can see the tabs have been moved in the history. You do get that as a list, but it doesn't allow me to um, you know, go to a part from the, the history. So what I'd recommend is if you just jump into any assembly, you can right click the, the tab and say open the part studio and it will switch over to that. Um, when I move a studio to a different document, is there a way to not break the link between the studio and the assemblies that link to that studio? That is, if an assembly in a document A links to a studio in document B and I move the studio to document C, the assembly in A can't update to the latest version of the document anymore. You, you must use move to document, and that's a key thing. If you want to maintain the link and still move parts around to different documents, you must use move to document. So right-click a tab and say move to document. What that will do is it will allow you to move parts to a different document and still link them in this original. Now, I will say, if you do that, in order to get it to update, you must create a version. And that's a deliberate decision we've made when, when you have parts in a different document. If they're linked into another document, they need to be versioned before you'll get a notification on the original assembly that a new version is available. So just a tip, if you're doing a lot of linked documents between different you know parts between different documents, Make sure to create a version, and then you'll have the option to update in the original. Now, if you put everything in the same document, you don't have to worry about versions. But if, if everything's in separate documents and you're linking them, you must create a version. Questions? Maybe this is covered. Is this model public? No. No, this, this particular model isn't public. There are a lot of public models, so definitely check them out. Um, does the first search function search in folders? Yes, the search tabs function in the top left of the tab manager will search inside the folders. Can I give a folder a new symbol to have a visual help? No, 
No, there's no way to change the icon for folders as of today. How can I find an individual part that I want to reuse, but I don't know where it is or which document it's part of? Just search by the name. If you know the name, you can search by it, and it doesn't matter which document it's a part of or which folder it's in. If, you do, if your inserting is linked, all you got to do is search by the name. What is the best way to manage configurations currently in Onshape? If not, what is the best way to handle related but different designs for the same part? I would recommend using branches. Um, we have, we have, we've done a webinar on branches. I have a, a video out there on branches too. So definitely take a moment to check out branching. And it allows you to create a separate workspace, make any changes that you want, and then it doesn't impact the original. I see that large part of successfully managing the Onshape data is SOP based, standard operating procedure based. Is there official documentation? I should say that you know all of the examples I've shown you, there is no standard operating procedure. There's no uh, you know companies have their own. Yeah, so you know if I can go to company A and company B and they'll have two totally different structures for how they manage their folders. There isn't a particular style that I've seen unified amongst all companies. It's it's something that is very particular to the organization. Um, so there isn't really a standard operating procedure for creating folder structures just because everyone has their own standard. And, it, it, you know, much like many things, it's totally relative to the organization. Okay, so we've discussed tab folders, and I think that's a key part of, you know, kind of paring down your, your large documents and making them manageable inside of Onshape. But the last thing I want to mention here today is the concept of labels. And the reason I like to mention labels is there may be situations where you have multiple documents that really kind of tie back to a single project. Or maybe, you know, I have dozens of variations of a project, but they're all stored in different documents. And I want to be able to easily filter by documents that are associated with a punching machine, right? And an easy way to accomplish this is to create a label. So you'll see in the documents page, so I'm back on the documents page now, in the bottom left corner, there's a button here in the filters for new label. And like the name implies, and let's say, let's call it the punching machine. I'll click create. Now I've got this label called punching machine. Now the question inevitably comes up, how do I apply, how do I tell a document you have this label? So now I've got this punching machine label. You can think of it as a tag if you, if you prefer to think of it that way, but I want to be able to tag certain documents with that label. If you select the document in the top right you'll see a labels icon and I can select punching machine and now I've tagged that document with a label and you can do this with as many documents as you want so I can say punching machine and now I have two documents that are tagged with that label the reason this is so big is now I can come into the labels left click and I only see the documents that pertain to that label and it's just a way of organizing your documents into kind of categories. And that's, I think, what most users think of it as. If you want to be able to tag a document with a certain string of text and be able to easily filter by that, labels are ideal scenario. Now, a few questions that come up often when I show this. We can't create sub-labels. Um, so that's something that often gets asked. And also, you can have multiple labels associated with a document. So you can add more than one label. A uh, common one I often see is hardware. You know, I want a hardware specific, and maybe I have hardware in three different documents. Um, I can create one label called hardware, tag the three or four documents that I have with it, and now I have an easy way to filter and search by that hardware label. So you can have multiple labels attached to a document. You can have um, you know, many different documents attached to one label. It's entirely up to you how you choose to organize it. Now, another thing that often gets asked is, okay, I've, a I've added this label. How do I get rid of it? You know, well, how do I remove it? If you select the document, like I have here, and uncheck punching machine, you'll see here, I've now removed that label. So it's no longer associated with the document. So you can remove it and add it just by checking the box. And by the way, you can also create a new label right here. So just keep in mind, you know, there's kind of two levels to it. You have your tab folders, which are your ways of storing. Think of this as, you know, all of the project. Everything's in that one document, the entire project. And within that project, I may have dozens of subfolders. And that's how we manage tab folders. Labels are a bit different in the sense that you're tagging a document with a specific, you know, text string. And it makes it easy for me to filter in the future. So I can come down here, say, you know, six months from now, I want to see what all... Um, 
documents were associated with the punching machine label, left click, and it shows me them. Okay, so it's a it more of a way to organize all of your projects than it is necessarily folders to store things in. But the combination of the two really give you a lot of flexibility in kind of recreating, I think, what a lot of users are comfortable with in a typical file folder-like structure. So I see a few questions there. I'm going to stick around and answer all of them. Question, can you make folders for the label so the right-click menu does not grow so long? No, but I will say that's something that's higher on our list of priorities. So just realize we're aware of it and, and it's important to us too. Right now, you can create dozens of labels and it will just make a long list, but that is something we're working on. Are labels flat in hierarchy or can labels be managed in folders as well? No. And again, tying into the last question, definitely something that, that we're working on. So the labels capability will grow soon. And I should mention la both labels and tab folders have only been out now for, I want to say, a few months. So if you haven't been using Onshape much lately and you know one of your big struggles was managing those tabs, definitely check out the tab folders and, and labels. Question, do, to expand on an earlier question, do branches get updated if I update its root part? And the answer is no, unless you merge them. And that's something that you should consider. So merging will push the change from one to another. Any way to filter by more than one label? No. That's something that's been asked before as well. And that's something that, that we hope to have very soon. Can I find a specific part number in all documents? You can do a search by that part number, absolutely. Uh, I notice I can add labels to files created by other people. Do the creators of the files also see the labels, or are they only put on by me? No. It's important to point out the labels are specific to you. Um, so when I create a label, if I share that, the, the other user doesn't necessarily see it. Um, so just keep that in mind. I've created multiple documents related to the same project. Is there a way to merge two documents into one? Um, what I would recommend is move to document. You can you know, select a whole bunch of tabs from one document, right-click it, say move to document, and then choose the document you want to move all those tabs into. And that will just bring everything together. So the merge, I would just you know, select the tabs, right-click, move to document, and then choose the document you move them to. All right, so that is what I had planned for you. I'm going to stick around and answer any outstanding questions. So if you have any questions, um, feel free to ask them. I have one last question question for the audience. So bear with me. I see there are a few questions. I will get to them. So just stick around for a moment. Um, are you interested in a private demo discussion from an Onshape account manager? We can have one of our account managers reach out to you and um, give you details about how Onshape might apply to your specific application, maybe a more specific demonstration, for example. So are you interested in a, a private meeting with one of our um, account managers? Let us know and um, we can certainly schedule that. So I see there are quite a few questions. I'm going to stick around and answer any questions. So um, bear with me. Hang around for just a second. But that's really what I had planned. Um, I want to say thank you, everyone, and have a good day.